live on Sports Radio 102.9 FM, The Game. It's time for Middays with Q. Now to your host, Rich Quinones. Good afternoon, everyone. 12 o'clock straight up on the East Coast. Back in the saddle. Hope everyone is well. A Wednesday edition of Middays with Q coming at you. A little power hour on this 31st of July 2024. I'm your host as always, Rich Quinones. Mi hermano, Angel Martinez, behind the glass, producing a show, keeping us on the air. Where have you been, everyone? Uh, oh, my goodness. 727-858-665. Oh, 60 plus to play with. We'll be back in the saddle most likely on Friday. We will have some programming updates as well for what's going on on Coastal Sports Network. And of course, Sports Radio 1029 FM, the game, Southwest Florida's newest game in town. But um, good to be back. Very busy last week or so with uh, Team Combat League and the boxing and the traveling. Uh, back at it again this weekend down in D.C. with um, just regular uh, fights. But very interesting. Had a lot of fun. And uh, the uh, bouts and the fights were just phenomenal. And you'll get the Mega Brawl Thursday. That'll be on TCL Brawl Pass and the Zone. So definitely check that out. Miami versus Philadelphia. So there you have it. Um, very interesting bout. So <clears throat> NFL, Major League Baseball trade deadline. And by the way, the Olympics. I mean, if the Olympics are on and no one's watching them, are they still on? We'll get into that. Um, but... You know, the NFL, man, we got the Hall of Fame game tomorrow. I don't know. Caleb William thinks he's uh, all of a sudden Tom Brady not going to play in the game. If you are interested in uh, laying some shekels and coin on that one, you always look to the under in some of these games. But I know last week we were hit or miss uh, with the shows and the news came down that Tua got paid to a tongue of Ilova. And I think it's hilarious that people are still, still slandering. This kid, I mentioned it with uh, Lloyd Vance when we talked about breakout quarterbacks and guys getting paid on last week's edition of BYP, which is on the YouTube channel, Rich Q on Q, as well as SR1029, the game. And I'm at the point now where what the hell difference does it make how much these guys are getting paid? Like, I know we want to equate success to what they're making. We want to we want to basically connect the two, right? It's just, it's, it's just innate. It's what humans do. Well, that guy's making 150,000 as a CEO or, you know, a manager or whatever to help 500,000. He's not doing diddly. He's not doing squat. We look at athletes. We look at the quarterback position in the NFL. The same argument is constantly made. And my counter to that is all this guy does is win. He puts up ridiculous numbers, and we knew he was going to get paid. And it's just funny. like People are just acting like, oh, my God, here we go. I can't believe they paid this guy. He stinks. He's not good. He's got a noodle arm. Hey, man, look around the friggin' NFL. How many really great quarterbacks are in the NFL? When you really think about it, you count them on your hand. You're going to tell me that Tua? is not one of those guys, you know, uh, uh, top 10. It's just everyone wants to come at, you know, because the narrative on this guy in college, here you go, got to be on the field, and, you know, he's inconsistent. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, you look at this. So we start to look at the reward, the risk to reward, okay? Four-year, $212.4 million deal with the Dolphins, $167 million guaranteed. God bless. Have at it. Go ahead. It's where we're at right now with the quarterbacking position. And Miami, no one's talking about this. Miami is a franchise for the listening audience in Florida that hasn't had stability at the quarterback position since who? Number 13, Dan Marino. So if you add Tua, the only other quarterback with Tua is Ryan Tannehill. Two of those guys resigned with Miami since re Dan Marino retired after the 1999 season. So, again, here's your argument. Everyone's hemming and hawing, and they're freaking crushing this kid. What the hell are you doing? You're going to regret it. First of all, what was the other option? Okay. Number two is you want to keep doing what the Browns did for years. You want to keep doing what the Washington, then the Redskins commanders kept doing for years, or Tampa Bay kept doing for years, or Cincinnati at one time kept doing for years, or the Jets kept doing for years retreading, recycling, 
having basically journeyman quarterback have their journeyman quarterback have their journeyman quarterback? No, you don't. So you're talking 25 years? 25 years. And now you got Tua. He's the fourth quarterback from the 2020 class to sign an extension with the team that drafted him. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Jalen Hurts. They want stability at the quarterback position, so they're paying the kid. But this narrative, because what? He's 6'1", 6'2", being generous. He puts up numbers. They win ball games. It's hard to go on the road and play Kansas City in the playoffs. But everyone's got to pump the brakes. Just relax. Seriously, this this narrative that he can't win, the risk to reward, this guy's a choke artist, he's not good. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. It's just utterly ridiculous. He gets hurt, he gets hurt. That's life in the friggin' NFL, man. That's it. Like, it, it's everyone wants to come out of the woodwork and the talking heads and ESPN and Cowherd. It's so easy. It's low bearing fruit. It's the lazy friggin' take. Here we go. You know, here we go. What? The guy comes out and does the show me this money. Who cares? Who cares? I mean, honestly, like, it's so easy to sit there and rip on this guy. Show me the money. Oh, uh, no one cares, man. You know, it's so funny because we can sit there and turn around that some of you jackasses that are on TV shouldn't be making the type of money that you are. So you're going to counter and you're going to crush the athletes. You're going to crush these guys for getting friggin' paid. So you're going to go after Miami. So what? Guys having fun with people in the stands. Having the money sign. The kid plays, he balls, he plays hard. And I get it. He's 9-15 and 15 against winning teams. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But my God, you're missing a big picture. This guy's one of the top quarterbacks in the AFC. And he just led the NFL in passing yards. And the Dolphins are built to compete. The Dolphins are built to go through the AFC East. The Dolphins are built to have an opportunity to represent the AFC. They are built right now with all this speed all over the place, the tight ends, the running back, quarterback, the wide receivers. Here you go. Now, you need this kid on the field. We know that. But the market is the market. So cry all you friggin' one if you're Colin Coward. Cry all you one if you're the talking heads on ESPN. He deserves the extension. I hope he goes out, and I hope two of friggin' balls. I hope he throws for 35 touchdowns, 5,000 yards. They win a playoff game. They get to a divisional round. They get to the AFC Championship to shut people up. To just shut them up. Because I'm telling you right now, you look around the AFC right now, and you look around the AFC East, New England's going to stink. Their roster and their coaching staff, the way it's presently constructed, horrible. I'm not sold on the Jets. You're already seeing this nonsense, Aaron Rodgers, and, you know, you got a zig, you got a zag, him and the wide receivers. Aaron Rodgers saying practice is sloppy. Aaron Rodgers, again, you're another one. Stop. You had a cup of coffee with the Jets, four offensive snaps. Buffalo, there's something fundamentally broken and wrong with the Buffalo Bills. It's all going to be on Allen. It's there for Miami. Yes, you'll have to compete with Baltimore, but what the hell is Lamar Jackson won? Okay, yeah, you got a team or two on the rise in the AFC South. Maybe it's Jacksonville. Maybe it's the Texans in year two with Stroud. Maybe it's Indianapolis being sneaky. And then you have the AFC West, Kansas City. Miami basically will have to go through three teams. And if this kid can stay healthy, he will put up monster yards. And Miami will win games. Now, I get it. You open up the season against Jacksonville. Then you're going to be tested right away against the Bills, Seattle, the Titans, the Pats, the Colts. Those are all winnable games. Arizona, if they're 5-2 and two and they beat the Bills or 4-1 and one and this kid's playing well, you'll see right away, once again, the odds on Tua, MVP. Here we go. Just like we saw early on in the season. So again, this narrative, 
right? The narrative, the constant narrative, the constant narrative, the kid can't play, the kid can't play. The kid can play. Like just everyone needs to just relax. You want him upright? You want him making plays? And that's what he does. And you have a head coach that's going to design the offense around his strengths. And I just think everyone needs to just back off. Just back off to it. You don't have to think he's a good quarterback, but you're you're going after the kid because of the money that he's making. But I can make the argument, whatever quarterback that got paid in the NFL. I can make that same argument. I mean, honestly, what what is Josh Allen won? What is Justin Herbert won? What is Jalen Hurts won? Granted, you went to the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow, granted, you went to the Super Bowl. But you never won it. But we're so predisposed to look at the contracts of what these guys are making. Yeah, it's astronomical. You know it, and I know it. It's just ridiculous, these contracts. But that's the NFL. That's the quarterbacking position. That's just where we're at. Defensive ends get paid. Wide receivers get paid. The running backs don't get paid. Shutdown corners get paid. The quarterback touches the ball the most. They're the face of the franchise. You're going to give me 10 quarterbacks that you think right now are better than Tua? Go ahead. Go ahead. He's a top 10 quarterback. He is a top 10 quarterback. Period. There's no debate. We're all of a sudden, right? Everyone now is going to jump on Jordan Love, CJ Stroud because of the seasons they had. So we know it's Mahomes. We know it's Jackson. We know it's Burrow. We know it's Allen, Justin Herbert, eh. Prescott. I'm sorry. He's not a top 10 guy anymore. Aaron Rodgers is not a top 10 quarterback. Stafford's on the outside. It's a young man's game. You want to put CJ Stroud? Love? Fine. Guess what? I'm sticking two of there. <laughs> I'm sticking them there. Listen, when the play goes according to plan, this kid is a friggin' surgeon. He had the lowest time to throw of any starting quarterback, 2.33 seconds. Now, did he have some turnover-worthy plays? Yeah, where there was no pressure. Got to cut that down. And it takes a dip when you talk about grading him. And again, his arm, it can be adequate right now for an NFL level. It's not going to get him out of trouble, but it's not going to really put him in trouble. And that's why you have Mike McDaniel, which is a good thing. I hope he goes out and he flat out shuts people up, and I hope he friggin' balls. I really do, because I think he is. All right, just cranking up on a Wednesday edition of Middays with Q. Coming at you on this 31st of July. Don't forget, text in 727-858-6650. We'll read off the Facebook tweets. You guys can tweet at us as well. Facebook comments and the uh, tweets on X, Twitter, whatever the hell you guys call it right now. Whatever you kids they're calling it at this moment, 727-858-6650. A little power hour on this Wednesday. Don't forget, we are powered by I on TV for all your late-breaking news, uh, weather, traffic, all these alerts. Check them out online, and you guys can get in on the conversation, 727-858-6650. I see the Tua comments coming in as well on my Facebook page and on X. You guys tell me to relax. You guys relax. You guys, you, you guys want to put Dak Prescott, Aaron Rodgers in the top 10. They're not. Aaron Rodgers is old. He's going to break down. Dak Prescott, come on, stop. What the hell has he won? Just enough. Enough. You want to talk recency bias, so we're going to jump on Stroud. We're going to jump on uh, Jordan Love. Now, what if they regress? Now you're going to bump him out of the top 10? I mean, that's that's where we're at in the NFL, and it's nauseating. It gets nauseating after a while where you got to listen to some of these jerk offs and some of these jackasses that are on TV. You know what? Maybe you shouldn't be making the money you're making on TV talking about. I mean, half of you guys, Coward's a perfect example. This guy's talking about players that passed away 20 years ago. He thinks they're still in the friggin' league. And you're going to have a comment. You're going to have a thought. Every time you you have to get fact checked. Derek Jeter had to do it the other day. What was it like to face Nolan Ryan? What? Like, come on, man. (laughs) <laughs> like what, what, what the frick, what 
Uh, that must have been something. Derek, Derek, tell me something, right? Derek Jeter joins us on the herd. What was it like to face Ty Cobb and Babe Ruth? Shut up. Fact check. You get paid millions of dollars to be on TV. Know what the frig you're talking about. My God. Jesus God. I can't believe that guy was unbelievable on Sunday for the Giants. He's been on the IL for six weeks. <laughs> what are we doing? Like, what are we doing? I, I can't, I can't take it. I had this producer when I was on the air down here. Holy Christ. We con I constantly had a fact check talking about stats and comments and trying to um, come up with an opinion. And, and half the time, I don't even know what the hell this kid was talking about. It was like constant fact check, constant fact check, constant, 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 not constant contact, but constant fact check. I mean, it was ridiculous. Oh, oh no, I can't believe it. You know, in uh, 1992, they had a great, what, they didn't even make the playoffs. Oh, well, you know, it must've been 95 or I think his contracts for 150. Nah, it's for 50 million. It's like, stop, stop. Everyone just needs to just calm down. We don't have to get all bent out of shape. I get it. Dog days of summer. MLB trade deadline, the debacle that is the Olympics. I mean, they, they, I think they tried to make the water beautiful in Paris and like sewers leaked. I mean, I get it. Everyone's a little upset, but you have the Hall of Fame game tomorrow. No, see, um, no Caleb Williams because, you know, Caleb Williams right now is, uh, apparently he's going to the Hall of Fame. He doesn't need to suit up for a series or two. You got football right around the corner. Second half of the baseball season. You had the Yanks and the Phillies last night. You had the Chicago White Sox. I friggin' told you guys, jump on the White Sox during this losing streak. A couple of you guys listened to me. A couple of you guys didn't. And guess what? You didn't put money in your pocket. I get it. You're upset with me today. That's fine. I can live with it. I'm fine with that. But I told you this. When the White Sox lost seven, eight, nine games in a row, jump, jump, jump on them. And the last time I checked, let's do the math like they used to do on Sesame Street. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 friggin' games they've lost. 16 straight games they lost. And the funny thing is, they didn't deal their most coveted pitcher at the trading deadline. <laughs> You're, you're bad. You're, but I bet you some talking heads will sit there and say, wow, they, they were busy at the trade deadline because, you know, they're not really fact checking. All right. 18 past the 12 o'clock hour Whew. on a Wednesday edition of Big Days with Q, 727 A little power hour. We'll get to the comments as well. 727 We are powered by. Coastal Sports Network, Sports Radio, 1029 FM, The Game. And, of course, I on TV. Quickie timeout. We'll get to your tweets. We'll get to your Facebook comments. And you guys can chime in as well. 727-858-6650 on this Wednesday. Hi, folks. This is Gerard Moynihan of Moynihan Lumber. And I would like you to know that our company has been selling Anderson windows for over 60 years. See the complete line of Anderson windows at any of our three locations in North Reading, Beverly, or in Plastow, New Hampshire, or at MoynihanLumber.com. I on Tampa Bay is the latest news, weather, and traffic for Pinellas, Pasco, Ellsboro, Hernando, and surrounding communities. Stay connected on X, Facebook, and their website, IonTB.com. I on Tampa Bay keeps you informed on breaking news as it happens. Southwest Florida's newest game in town. Sports Radio 102.9, the game powered by I on Tampa Bay. We'll be right back. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager, learning the lingo. Today I'm going to help parents translate teen slang. Now, when a teen says something is on fleek, it's exactly like saying, that's rad. It simply means that something is awesome or cool. Another one is totes. It's exactly like saying, totally, just shorter. As in, I totes love going to the mall with Becca. Another word you might hear is jelly. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will think you're, um, 
rad just the same. To learn more, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council. This is the story of a very special woman. In a matter of seconds, she turned herself into a great mathematician or an entrepreneur. Her knowledge was limitless and still is. She could also make monsters disappear, especially those that lurked in the shadows under the bed. Once, this woman put back together a teenage girl's broken heart, which had been shattered in a thousand pieces, just by giving her a bear hug. She masqueraded as a regular person at work, but as a superhero at home. Everyone knows her as Gabriella. I still call her mom. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need to help, complete with tips and resources, at aarp.org caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Call or text the show at 727-858-6650. Now, back to Q. All right, 23 past the 12 o'clock hour, 727-858-6650. Um, you guys can get in on the conversation as well. Um, just seeing what some of you guys, I'm trying to read off um, what some of you guys are saying on Facebook and on X, but certainly you guys can comment, see what you think on uh, Tua, the NFL. And this is where we're at, like I said, with the, contracts it's just and it's going to be very easy uh low-bearing fruit when people struggle i mean that's that's pretty much the easiest thing to do when quarterbacks struggle in the nfl again right away look daniel jones had a really nice run uh when we were talking about the uh giants a couple years ago and then he got paid inconsistent and he got hurt and that happens uh joe Summer's point on Facebook chimes in queue. Uh, I hear what you're saying regarding Tua and his contract, but do you honestly think to a man, truth serum, that he's worth that kind of money every time he's been put in a big spot? He's flamed out for Miami, plus the injury history with the concussions bothers me. Great rant to start the show. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, but that's everywhere, right? Injuries are a part of the game. That you You can't. You want to have stability at the position. And if you become one of the franchises that every year you're trying to draft a quarterback, I mean, do you remember the Browns? If you go back and you look at their history, I mean, I'll pull it up for you. I mean, some of the guys are some, oh, hello, Moisturizer. What do we got here? What did I pull up? Oh, we got audio. Uh oh, uh oh, what was that? Look at that. That's on me. Maybe pull it up this way. <laughs> I got like 36 windows open right now because I'm trying to look at my notes. So, <laughs> and they're talking about moisturizers. Go figure. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, here, you got the Browns draft picks. All right. So, this just kind of gives you an idea. These are some of the quarter. Here we go. Here are the quarterbacks. Now, you tell me if you're talking about stability, right? This is what we want. And and how about these names that are coming out, right? How about these names? So Brown's quarterback history. Some of these names, ready? Charlie Fry, Tim Couch, Derek Anderson, Brandon Whedon, Kelly Holcomb, Josh McCown, Baker Mayfield, Court, uh, Colt McCoy, Jeff Garcia, Trent Dilfer, Vinny Testaverde, Brian Horder, Doug Peterson, Deshaun Watson. Those are, like I said, some of them that were drafted, obviously some of them that were free agents, but that kind of lets you know where you're at right now. If you're a franchise, the Jets had the same problem for years. Cincinnati had the same problem for years. Washington was the worst. 
I mean, you go back, this is from 2010. The Browns had McCoy, DeLome, Seneca Wallace, Colt McCoy, Seneca Wallace, Brandon Whedon, Thad Lewis, Jason Campbell, Brandon Whedon, Brian Hoyter, Brian Hoyter, uh, Johnny Manziel, Connor Shaw, Austin Davis. Miami doesn't want to do that. Miami doesn't want to do that. They know that they need stability at the quarterback position. So, so even if they're overpaying him, what is the big deal when you think about it? Every player in the NFL, to some extent, gets overpaid or they're overvalued, right? Now, the expectations, when you make that type of money, Jalen Hurts' contract, Burrow, Lawrence, we're not even talking about Trevor Lawrence. Two is better than Trevor Lawrence. He's the expectations are always going to be there at the quarterback position. Because ultimately, you live and die with the quarterback position. They're either going to make or break your franchise. And if you go out and you pay the guy and it doesn't pan out, it doesn't pan out. And it's a really brutal lesson learned. Did you hear what Elway said the other day? Elway's like, oh man, I should have drafted, you know, Allen, not Chubb. Kind of interesting. I mean, it's a good thing that Chubb's not with you anymore. I mean, obviously he's uh, with Miami, but this is where we're at in the NFL. This is where we're at. I want to hit on a little baseball too, and then we'll bring it back uh, before we hit the break. The one thing I've noticed with, and you guys can still comment in with baseball. And right now, Marlins uh, just knotted up against the Rays, top of the second. Both teams stink. I mean, Tampa's three games over 500. The Marlins are, I think, 39 and 68. Yanks and Phil's uh, first pitch in about five or so minutes. Uh, odds on that one even. That was a good game last night. That was a real good game. Yankees, I mean, obviously taking two out of three. You're seeing the bats come alive, uh, 14 to four, then seven to six. You know, again, I was a little surprised. You look at, again, Cashman, you want certain moves that the Yankees make. It doesn't always pan out like that. The Yankees started off red hot, just like the Philadelphia Phillies. And then both teams kind of cooled off a little bit. I think the Phillies have some issues right now. I really do. If you're a Phillies fan, I'd be a little worried. I'd be a little worried because you look at the pitching, they're getting raked against the Coles. They've dropped, what, seven out of eight, seven out of nine. Actually, uh, let me see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine out of 12. Now, Atlanta's only seven and a half back. I wouldn't panic just yet, but you're starting to see right now they come out of the gate, then all of a sudden, boom, they can't hit. The pitching goes south. It's not what you want. You still got guys struggling at the plate. You know, Schwarber's only hitting 245. You know, Schwarber actually has 22 home runs, which you would think, eh, kind of a Schwarber-esque type of year. You know, Harper's average has gone up a little bit. You need him to catch fire. Stott, 243. Castellanos has always been an issue, 238. So they've got, right now, the Phillies, you know, you, you hit that little uh, spot during the season, and you got to figure things out. We know baseball is an absolute grind. You know it, and I know it as well. So we'll get into that as well on the other side. Fast approach in 1230 right here on Sports Radio 1029 FM, the game powered by Coastal Sports Network. And, of course, I on TV. You can text in. You can call as well, 727-858-665. A little power hour on this Wednesday. NFL, baseball. Uh, you know, if you guys are watching the Olympics, let me know because full transparency, haven't watched a second of the Olympics, have absolutely no desire to watch the Olympics. I'm just not watching it. It's just, I, I'm just, I'm not into it. So we'll get your thoughts on that as well. But I mentioned a lot of NFL stuff, a lot of baseball. We'll kind of recap what's going on in baseball second half of the season, trade deadline, winners, losers. We'll grade them out as well. Keep it locked in. We'll take you up to about one-ish on this Wednesday. Hi, folks. This is Gerard Moynihan of Moynihan Lumber. And I would like you to know that our company has been selling Anderson windows for over 60 years. See the complete line of Anderson windows at any of our three locations in North Reading, Beverly, or in Plastow, New Hampshire, or at MoynihanLumber.com. Hey, Dad. Your prescription will be ready in just a minute. Hey, Dad. Your laundry will be ready in just a minute. Dad, your lunch will be ready in just a minute. Hey, honey. Why don't you take a minute? 
When you help care for a loved one, you give them as much time as you can, making sure they're safe and comfortable. But it's just as important that you take some time for yourself. At AARP, we can help with information and useful tips on how you can maintain a healthy life balance, care for your own physical and mental well-being, and manage the challenges of caring for a loved one. Because the better care you take of yourself, the better care you can provide for your loved one. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. You're there for them. We're here for you. Find free care guides to support you and your loved one at aarp.org slash caregiving. That's aarp.org slash caregiving. A public service announcement brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. All right, class. Let's hear what everyone did this weekend. Jill? Well, I raised my older sister to a big oak tree. It was at least a hundred years old. My mom said I must have set a record or something. And then we went down by a stream and perched up on this huge rock and saw all of these little minnows swimming around way below us. And then I rescued my little brother from an evil slug king who was guarding him at the bush fortress. And my sister and I brought him back to our super twig for for safety. And then we all laid out and told stories until it got dark. And the Big Dipper led us all the way home. Where were you, Jill? Yeah. We went to the forest. It's not that far away. Anyone want to come this weekend? (laughs) Ask your parents to take you and your friends to the forest this week and find the fun, adventurous you. It's closer than you think. Check out discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Download the Sports Radio 102.9 FM The Game app and tell your friends that Florida has a new leader in digital sports radio. Well, 35 on this Wednesday edition of Middays with you. Joey chimes in, kind of river in Paris, septic tank, now swimming in it. Yeah, that's that's not a good look. <laughs> that's, I mean, there's been a lot of issues. Uh, I, I think... I mean, like, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to go to where, you know, people were uh, going before. I think the triathlon was postponed too, right? Because of the quality, the water quality concerns. Um, Yeah. I mean, it's just, I I, just full transparency. I really have not um, watched the Olympics. I just, I'm not into it. I mean, that's just, it, you know, I mean, I used to watch the gymnastics and Simone Biles and you watch, you know, some of the soccer and the basketball. I'm just not, I'm just not in it, um, at all. You know, my mind's on other sports, you know, MLB getting set for football. Um, you know, the trade deadline, which I wanted to get in that a little bit. So it's easy right now that, you look at the, uh, say like the Dodgers, right? <clears throat> I thought they did well <clears throat> at the uh, deadline. Typically, some teams will look for impact players. <clears throat> and if you can't get, say, for their sake, the everyday outfielder, uh, you get a pretty nice player in um, uh, Kermayer. You also get some pitching. That's what you want it, right? So again, if you look at the Dodgers and the Phillies in the NL, I think the difference is that the Phillies holes are not being masked and that's the problem. So like the Dodgers, their roster, unlike that of the Phillies, for example, it's just littered with unknown, right? And in the, in the NL East, you don't want to give the Mets or the Braves any type of life. I don't think they're going to catch them, but the Phillies are definitely struggling at this moment. Uh, Then you look at the NL West, the team where the Dodgers reside, and all of a sudden, boom. You know, San Diego, it's crazy that they have so much talent, and they basically need it starting pitching. But again, you know, you got to pivot. You got to go to, say, an impact reliever. You couldn't meet the demands at the top of the – uh, the market, so to speak. So you still make a move or two. Now, all of a sudden in the NL, if you look at the wild card, Hey, their playoff chances, the Padres sat at 63% playoff odds entering Tuesday. 
They acquired Jason Adam. Uh, I think they got the kid um, Perez. They added another arm, I believe. Uh, they added, um, you know, I think if you look at a couple more wins over expected record, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I think right now, if you have frontline relievers on a playoff team, then that can be a major impact come late September and October. And I think right now, the Padres add it, right? You got Robert Suarez, you got Estrada. So now, boom, what do you have to give me? Four or five innings from their starters in the postseason? Uh, and then you look at the AL, and I don't know what the hell the White Sox are thinking. I, I don't understand why you're holding on to Luis Robert Jr. I don't get it. I feel bad for the kid. He's a nice player. The White Sox are a laughing stock. They are as dysfunctional of a franchise. I mean, they're... It's not, it's bad enough that you're looking, you're staring down the barrel now of easily over, easily over a hundred losses. But now you're start to, you're, you're getting into that, that historically bad type of, um, area, right? I mean, the run differential we we thought they were going to be bad and there's still a half a season left to play. And I know when you guys listen to back your play that I do during the week on my YouTube channel, Rich Keel and Q, as well as um, SR1029, we talk about run differentials and we talk about, you know, the money line. We talk about the starters. We talk about the odds. The Chicago White Sox, if you would have actually just kept playing them on the money line once they lost to Minnesota and you played all the opposition on the money line, you'd probably be up about 150,000 right now. If you rolled it over, rolled it over, over, rolled it over. Their run differential is minus. It's minus 222. To put it in perspective, the Miami Marlins, their run differential is minus 148. So again, if you do the math, you're talking what, 70 something, almost 70 something odd runs. That if you bump that up to around 80, that equates, if you do the math, it is equating to say another 18 wins because that's what the Marlins have. They have 39. I mean, think about that for a minute. If you score a little bit in baseball, you're going to win some games. The White Sox can't score at all. I mean, hell, the Angels, their run differential is minus 92 and they won 47 games. Chicago is 27 and 83. This is unheard of. The Chicago White Sox, are you ready for this, baseball fans? They are 39 and a half games out of first. 39 and a half games. They are historic. They're, they're reaching the depths of saying, uh, you know, if, again, I, I'm sure Cowherd was probably around and he can ramble off the 62 Mets. He probably thinks they only won 10 games. They were 40 and a buck 20. They were 41 20 and they had one friggin' tie. I, I don't know how the hell that happened. But anyway, they were historically bad. Their best player was Frank Thomas. Not the Frank Thomas we know, but the old third baseman, first baseman, Frank Thomas, that was born in Pittsburgh many, many moons ago. He had 34 home runs that year. They were a bad franchise. The White Sox are pretty much that bad. Ownership, cheap. Fan base, you know, you want to say that they're passionate, but they're hit or miss. And I'm just shocked that they didn't do anything at the trade down. How do you not? You're going to let that poor kid basically just dangle and toil? I mean, that's horrible. Horrible. He's probably their most steady player. You know, they got the kid Sheets, they got the kid Vaughn, but Robert Jr., I mean, think about this, man. You're 26. You had 38 home runs last year, which is a really nice year. About a 264, 38 home runs, center field position, not bad. And this year, you're on a bad team. You've been nicked up. You've been banged up, played in 55 games, and it's like, ah, uh, Like, get me the hell out of here, right? Get me out of here. And I know the Phillies were looking at him. 
I know Seattle was looking at him. And I just can't believe they they hung on to um, uh, Crochet and Robert Jr., which makes no sense. You're talking about the two most valuable assets that should have been moved. And it became clear early on that the White Sox were looking to continue offloading all these assets in exchange for prospects. You head into the next year of White Sox baseball. Here you go. Yet the two players that would have gave them a jump, a jump start in that process remains on the team. Now I get it. Robert Jr. It uh, uh, Robert Jr.'s case. It, it's a little more simple. He's missed a substantial amount of games. When, he, when he's been on the field, he hasn't shown much promise either. But with that being said, that's why I would have I dished him off. Stick him to a contender. I get it. He's banged up. He's got the hip injury. We haven't seen him play since April. Okay, fine. He's Again, I get it. But again, if you're, if you're trying to acquire young prospects, that's what these franchises try to do. It's fair to assume the center fielder probably doesn't fit in their competitive window. We talk about the bridge quarterback in the NFL, the journeyman quarterback. You know, this guy is not, uh, we're not looking to the future with this guy. It's the same in baseball as well. So if you're looking to um, dish off these guys, why not? Even again, you're looking at the kid, um, Crochet. His value is arguably at the highest. And they didn't move him. I mean, their GM is just, I don't know. Are you going to try to max it, maximize their return during the off season? I, I just don't get it. But I think the Phillies, they've got some issues right now, man. Philadelphia Phillies have some issues. The Dodgers, I, I, I thought from the get-go, the Phillies and the Dodgers were going to be on a collision course. And again, you want to win the division. You don't want to have to play a hot team going in to uh, the wild card. And the Mets right now, San Diego, the Mets, and the Braves, they're your, and Arizona, think about that. Arizona is a half a game back. The NL wild card, those two spots, man, you got St. Louis, Pittsburgh's a couple games back, you know, the Giants, the Reds, the Cubs, the Nationals, Marlins, Rockies, whoosh, stick them to the side. I wouldn't want the Braves to get in. I wouldn't want San Diego. San Diego, their offense is starting to heat up as well, plus 35 run differential. They've been on a friggin' tear, eight out of nine. I mean, look at that lineup. Machado, Profer, Merrill, Kim, Tatis. They can hit, man. They can hit. And they can steal bases too. But the Dodgers at the moment, I believe, are the most complete team, I would say, in baseball. I would say in baseball. I know Baltimore's having a really good year. Cleveland quietly is having a very good year. You know, Seattle and the Astros are going to go back and forth in the AL West. My buddy's an Astros fan. He's pissed off, you know, what the Astros are giving up at the deadline. Then you got the Phillies. Milwaukee, I just, I'm not sold on Milwaukee. The Dodgers, to me, most complete team in baseball right now. I get it. They dropped six to five last night to San Diego. They dropped three out of four. I don't care. You've got Otani. You got Freeman. You got Hernandez. You got Smith. You got Pages. You got that starting rotation. Um, it's sick. You know, the rotation, the ERA, these guys have dropped. You know, now it's at like 3.6. You can throw out an array of starters. They're going to be a really dangerous team. And I think the Phillies and the Dodgers, they're on this collision course. Uh, man, I would love to sit there and say my Yankees are going to make a run. I just... I can't, listen, uh, Chisholm Jr., nice move, okay? But I feel as though the Yankees are so, and I think he had, I think it's a second straight two-homer game, right? So, and that was a nice win by the uh, Yanks last night in 12 against the uh, Philly 7-6. to six. I just get nervous when it comes to the starting rotation, and the Yankees are so feast or famine, right? And then you had the late scratch uh, with Cole, a little you know, bit um, run down. They made the move for Lighter Jr. in the trade. So they got De Los Santos. They boost the bullpen. It's just feast or famine, man. 
they either got to score eight, nine, 10 runs, or you need your starter to go six, seven strong. And we know that baseball is not built like that anymore. I mean, I think the Yankees, can they make a run? Are the Yankees built right now to make a run out of the AL? I don't know. They were looking at flattery, but they backed out because of medical sources, uh, medical concerns. Um, you know, Cashman, you look at some of the moves he's made over the years at the trade deadline. There have been some really big hits and there have been some really big misses. I like Leiter. He struck out 34% of the batters he's faced this season, which is pretty good. That's a top 10 mark among qualified relievers. You know, De La Santos strikeout pitcher right around 29% strikeout weight. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that, right? You, good pitching, good pitching. That's what you want. Uh, but man, I'll tell you since June 14th, I pulled it up 13 and 23 better than only the historically bad white Sox, <laughs> And the offense has been okay. And the pitching at times is just not there. It's collapsing. And that is a cause for concern if you're a Yankees fan. Um, and that's cause for concern, um, uh, for a guy like myself, right? Because they need to hit and they need the pitching to be stout and to be in line. 1246. We'll get some of your comments as well. 727-858-6650. Oh, don't forget to download the app, SR1029 FM, the game, Southwest Florida's newest game in town. We are part of Coastal Sports Network. A little shuffling, a little movement, some programming notes coming up as we get set for the football season. We um, are adding some new shows as well, so we are very uh, happy about that, but download the app. We're getting a ton of traction to the website. We're going to add some more stuff with CSN bets, but the main thing is share, let your friends know. We love that you guys are chiming in. We love the comments. We love that you're checking out the website, but we got everything now on the man. We got the app. It's crystal clear. The audio is fantastic. Download the app. Once you go to the website, it's right there for you. I mean, it's literally, you scroll down a little bit, you can text the show, you can call the show, you'll see the graphic for Ion TV, but then Apple, Android, tablet, PC, Macs, boom, download the app, you're good to go. Um, so uh, we want to see those eyeballs, we want to see those numbers increase, and you guys support the show, do what you're doing, share the show with your friends, tweet it out, Facebook, comment, like, share, download the app as well. All right, about 10 to play with on this a little rapid fire Wednesday edition of Middays with Q right here on SR1029 FM, the game. Quickie timeout. We'll come back. We'll reset the table. Uh, I'll give you some plays as well, and then we'll clean it up with a little NFL news and notes. A couple thoughts I have uh, as we uh, get set for the Hall of Fame game uh, tomorrow night. Hi, folks. This is Gerard Moynihan of Moynihan Lumber, and I would like you to know that our company has been selling Anderson windows for over 60 years. See the complete line of Anderson windows at any of our three locations in North Reading, Beverly, or in Plastow, New Hampshire, or at MoynihanLumber.com. Ion Tampa Bay is the latest news, weather, and traffic for Pinellas, Pasco, Ellsboro, Hernando, and surrounding communities. Stay connected on X, Facebook, and their website, IonTB.com. Ion Tampa Bay keeps you informed on breaking news as it happens. Southwest Florida's newest game in town. Sports Radio 102.9, the game powered by Ion Tampa Bay. We'll be right back. Not completing high school is more of a social thing than it was an academic thing. Even though all these years have passed, I still had that longing to have my diploma. At age 30, Carissa finished her high school diploma. If you're even considering getting your high school diploma, you can do it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Don't forget to get social with us. Follow Q at Rich Q on Q. And now, back to Q. I saw former Giants tight end Darren Waller. I guess he was on the Rust Tucker pod. He was talking about Daniel Jones, right? Because Daniel Jones is one of those quarterbacks that will certainly be under the microscope this year, and rightfully so. Um, if he continues to struggle in camp, Drew Locke's going to start to get reps with the first team. But in any event, he was talking about the O-line and, you know, Daniel Jones, anyone back there is going to have issues because the O-line sucked. Yeah, Darren Baller, but, you know, the hell did you do last year? I think you caught 52 balls 
He had one touchdown. That's as bad as the Kenny Dot Galladay, you know, Golden Tate when the Giants uh, brought him in. It is amazing how these former players, once they're jettisoned, and, and Waller decide I'm going to rap a little bit here and there, I'm going to retire. All right. I mean, you know, that was a bad contract. That was a bad mistake by the Giants. You know, everyone looked at Waller. He had the monster year in 2019, 2020 for the Raiders, or uh, 2019, yeah, 2020, where he had over 1,000 yards uh, receiving both seasons, and then boom, here we go. Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, Quan chimes in. Q, have you been watching the Olympics at all? I missed the beginning of the show. It's absolutely crazy, some of the athleticism when you watch what's going on in swimming, gymnastics, and rugby. Quan, I have not. I and that's okay. You didn't hear the uh, beginning of the show. I haven't. Simone Biles is great. You know, I, I saw a highlight of the walk off, if you will, which I can't stand that phrase in rugby. You know, my buddy texts me a picture of the diver that looked like something out of, um, uh, you know, the movie uh, Back to School. You know, Thornton Mellon when he did the triple Lundy. <laughs> so, but I haven't. I mean, a Angel, have you watched? The Olympics, I honestly, I have not watched. I, if you were to say total time I watched the Olympics, aside from highlights, 30 seconds. If that, I'm just not in it, man. Does that make me a bad person? No, <laughs> maybe unpatriotic, but no. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, um, actually, it's, it's been good. <clears throat> some of it, like some of the fencing and stuff, I've never watched it because I'm just not into fencing. Um, yeah. and everybody can make their jokes. No, I'm not talking about the ones that you run and leap over. Not that kind of fencing. The one where you actually have a sword with a little beeper at the bottom of it and you poke the other person. Um, no, but the floor exercise by the women yesterday. Um, first of all, kudos okay. to Brazil for being able to, to pull off a <clears throat> bronze, if I remember correctly for Brazil, first time ever in, uh, in their country's history, which is really cool. Right. The, I, God, I wish I could remember. Maybe my uh, Debbie will, will remember. But so there was a girl before Simone Biles, lady, excuse me, young lady, before Simone Biles last night on the floor. She took place of another young lady that was on the team as well because she was feeling ill. So she she did awesome on the beam, both her and Simone Biles. Simone Biles had a small slip. Um, but when it came to the floor exercise, okay. I wish I could remember the, the young lady's name before Simone Biles. Did an outstanding floor routine, which I think at that point, USA already won gold. Then you enter Simone Biles, only had one out of bounds where she came out, but she went to running across the floor. And they do like this quick like stop to then leap up in the air. She got up to 11.8 feet in the air last night, which made her go out of bounds just by a little but minus that, I mean, count the calf injury she just had a couple of days ago. I mean, she did wonders out there. So kudos to the women. Um, the swimming competition has been pretty good, minus the stuff out there in that nasty river, whatever they want to call it. And the only other controversy there was they were lining up yesterday, and I think they were so just anticipating the moment of getting in and getting out yeah. that the uh, the judge, you can hear him saying line up, and usually it's line up, mark, and then you hear the boop, the sound. Yeah, and yeah. Off. yeah, that's beep, beep. yeah. Yeah. Well, they did line up, and I don't know what girl it was, but she was like, line up, here we go, and off she went. And so the right side, about 10 to 15 swimmers had taken off all at once. Then you hear the beep, and then the rest of them end up jumping in. So I don't know you know, what was the – if there was an outcome behind it, but you can yeah. tell it. Obviously, they got a major um, head start. But overall, man, it's been – I've liked it. I've really – we've enjoyed it. Um, Rob, My name is ceremonies. In Ocean City, Maryland, listening online from my 1290 The Ticket Days on Facebook chimes in. Q, did Angel just call you unpatriotic? <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was, yeah, it was a joke. I, I, I'm just not. You know, sometimes it's like trying to watch. I, I, I enjoy the Winter Olympics. I do. I've always enjoyed the Winter Olympics, and I used to. I used to be in the Olympics. Not I used to be, but I used to be into oh, them. Right. I'm just not anymore I, it, I i'm just i i really just i think gymnastics simone Biles. i think that's awesome i love you know enjoy that you know the soccer you know i just sorry man 
I mean, you know, maybe I need to get the hell out of this country. I don't know what to tell you. I just, I just, <laughs> I can't, I'm not equating it to like trying to like get into a TV show, but there are just some things that I'm like, nah. Well, because some of the stuff in there, like uh, you have break dancing. I, I don't know how, how that became an Olympics. Whoa, 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 whoa. You have break dancing in the Olympics? Uh, yes. Oh break my God. Yeah. Break into electric boogaloo? Is it uh, called Olympic breaking? No, break dancing. It went way back to their late eighties, early nineties. Holy crap! Did it start yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! The, I think the finals aren't done yet. And I, listen, I don't like. I don't. I just want to know, you know, who comes out and judges this thing because you got to think about. It. I mean, you hear. I think I've heard one in the early morning hours when I'm getting ready for Pete show, and I mean, the, the even the commentators like, I don't even know what in the world they could possibly say. Oh my god! I would. I would crush it. I would crush it as a commentator for breaking dancing. Are you kidding me? Oh, Here dude. he comes, five, six, with the New York fat laces. Clear the floor. <laughs> We're going to war. <laughs> remember, uh, remember electric uh, break into electric boogaloo? Yeah. You remember that great movie that was a cult classic? Um, and I would be shocked because I have this argument with my friends all the time. Remember the movie The Last Dragon? Oh, yeah. Okay. So me and my friends debate this constantly. And they had they had to put it in perspective for me. So Vanity was in The Last Dragon. Apollonia was in Purple Rain. Correct. So I would always go back and forth, like, you know, which one back in the day. And, you know, my friends would make the case for and against. But be that they were both. Um, very, very beautiful woman. Um, I think did Vanity pass away? Yeah, she might have correctly. I think she passed away, Vanity, because she was also in uh, Action Jackson. Remember that yeah. with Carl Weathers? Yeah, Bruce. how do you like your ribs extra cooked? Um, so, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> have all things to remember. <laughs> that was a great scene. That was a great scene. Uh, yeah, she yeah she passed away. So there was a scene in The Last Dragon where the kid was tied up with the rope. And the only way he can get out was to do the worm. So he just tried to like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he was able to move... <laughs> he was able to move the rope like up. So he was like... <laughs> <laughs> There's a great so when you say break dancing, I mean that's hilarious. Yeah, no, oh, man. I found it funny too that there were there was what was the other it, eventually so because of obviously gaming being so big, I think it was yeah. this Olympics that were trying to push the gaming aspect of it, but replaced it with skateboarding. So skateboarding is an Olympic like event. The X yeah. Games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's some of the stuff are kind of related to <clears throat> to just that over to the X Games. Because of the you know new generation versus old generation stuff, uh, but no, I mean it's overall it's I mean it, don't get me wrong I haven't enjoyed every single thing about it but there's there's moments that it right. and it's really good and there's some other stuff it makes no sense and then what I don't it's insane to me so obviously like the men you know whether being backstroke butterfly uh, the swim relays. For you know your wingspan usually gets pretty big. I mean, you remember Michael Phelps? We thought we had he had fins because he was damn good in the pool. Some of yep. the women, their wingspan, man. If if I'm standing next to one of them, I think I'm gonna go like way back and over, like where they, I can't be freaking seen because their wingspan is ridiculous. Now, granted, of course, they're always in the pool and stuff, but between that, the actually the water polo wasn't too bad. And I'm not a water water polo type person. But it was the U.S. first game out for the qualifier, uh, and it winning at like fifteen five. It was ridiculous. And the, the goalie, I don't know how the hell they freaking do it. Whether it's the men or women, but she's in the water going back and forth like usually like a hockey player does on ice. But mind you, he's on the ice. She's in the water, and she will leap out to get the ball. Just like if someone just told her, "Hey, let me." You, there you go. Up in the air you go. It's just it's insane, but it, it's good. And by the way, I said unpatriotic. Everybody knows he's very patriotic, just like I am from oh, the service. No, you don't need to. Don't don't worry about that. They're just having some fun. So I'm laughing because of um the great SNL skit, Martin Short with the water polo. Oh jeez, <laughs> brother, 
Did you ever see that skit before? (laughs) By the way, I'm sitting there doing research. I'm exhausted from like all the fights over the weekend and I'm still doing some research. And I flipped on a classic (laughs) Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short. Can you hold on? Was that the 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 three amigos? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You talk about a ridiculous movie. That is funny. Oh my god! What what does this tequila taste like? Ooh, it gives you a little kick. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man! Oh, I got a. By the way, as we close it out, I got a new show for you that I'm absolutely obsessed with. Which one? You'll like it. You might have already saw it. Uh, Lioness, Special Ops. No, but I think I put in the favorites, but I don't think I've fan- watched it. It's fantastic. Uh, 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 Zoe Saldano. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, it's, it's really, really, really good. Uh, and I've actually bumped, I haven't started watching it, so don't tell me. I bumped Cobra Kai because I'm trying to get through Lion S. All right. Yeah. So I just did it. Yeah. Go ahead. Did you, you said you watched Queen of South, right? Yes. And then see, we didn't, apparently we went back because we didn't realize there was an, there was a season five to close it all out. Um, but yeah. Oh, it wasn't, you know, I don't mean to interrupt you. It wasn't because it wasn't available. That's why. Uh, Like you had to wait, you had to wait for it to be available on either um, on demand. Right. Or I think they ran it on USA. So yeah, when you put it in there, correct. But it ran for five seasons. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I like the way they tied it all up. I'm not going to give it away for those who have not seen it, but that that was good. And then we started watching. There's a comedian um, that it, they did kind of like back in the day when they used to take the car to the body shop and they would put sound system and stuff in there. I forget the comedian's name. It's on Netflix, but they do um, they visit this um, body shop in California, and he actually does a really good job. What was it? exhibit? I think it was the one he used to do it before it on MTV. Pimp my ride. Oh uh, yeah, the, the pimp my ride. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, the new updated version of it on Netflix. And I forget the comedian's name. And he's a he's a funny dude though. But um, the one girl that's in there, she's she, honest God can't weigh more than maybe ninety eight pounds. But she has uh, tattoos, like nose rings, earpieces and stuff. If you were to see her on the street, you'd probably think like, okay, you know, what does she do? The body work that she does on the cars, like the paint jobs, man, I will, if I had a freaking car that I know that I needed like a, an outstanding paint job to, I would send it to her because I think she's probably really? the best of the Oh, yeah. Nice. She, the, one, the one Honda Prelude, they end up taking it in and she wanted it to do like a cartoon version of the car. How she contoured the lines, the marker that she put in there. You got to watch it. A car came out so damn slick. The only thing I said to Debbie was hopefully no one stole it out there in LA because yeah. of Honda. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. Um, no, I'll definitely check that out. Uh, I know real quick updates uh, before we get out of here. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <whistles> Yankees torch and Sanchez on the hill right now up four nothing top of the second over your fighting fills marlins doubling up the raise for two and o's over toronto to nothing uh my plays are pretty simple today i'm gonna ride the mets severino on the mound uh, right now it's in it even so i'm gonna grab the mets uh i'm gonna continue this will probably be the night the white Sox win but whatever i don't really care minus 255 i'll take the royals singers on the hill um White Sox just give up way too many runs. And then for the final play, Seattle on the road, even though I love the pitching matchup, Kirby and Bellow, uh, but the Mariners minus 115. So the Mariners, uh, the Royals, and as I just uh, mentioned, um, what was my third pick? Oh, my God. Oh, Severino, the Mets. What the hell? I got to write, start writing this down, losing my memory. Um, anybody? What's that? Is that brought to you by anybody? Yeah, my good friends over at Played Against Sports, 1450 Columbus Road. That's part of our BYP segment. That's right. Use sports equipment and more. So coaches out there, if you need uniforms, do not forget 
if you are in the Jersey area, but they ship all over the place. Play it again. Sports 1450 Clements Bridge Road in Deptford, New Jersey. All right. So as always, don't forget to start the week off. Pete Shepard Show 7 to 10, Monday to Friday. Martinez and company 10 to 12. Myself, middays with Q. We'll be back in the saddle, most likely on Friday. Angel and I got to play a little catch up manana. Angel needs a day to just decompress. Thursday could be a golf, uh, uh, golf cart day for you. I'm checking the weather down there for you right now as we speak. Yeah, speaking of, we're waiting for a system that might be coming through over the weekend. I think if anything, it'd be a rainmaker. I don't think it'd be a haymaker. It hasn't gotten to the haymaker status. Oh, look at that. I like a nice little, nice little play on words. Um, don't forget, download the app. Uh, connect with us on all the social media platforms, IG, uh, Facebook, as well as X. And it's pretty easy. Uh, it's Coastal Sports Network at CSN Florida. We are growing in organically, and we appreciate everyone chiming in. As Angel mentioned, download the app, download the app, download the app, download the friggin' app. All the shows are obviously on demand, powered by I on TV for all your breaking news, weather, traffic, alerts, I on TV. And coming at you right here on Coastal Sports Network. Sports Radio 1029 FM, the game, Southwest Florida's newest game in town. So we'll have some programming news and notes in about two or three days. A lot of stuff going on with the football season, college, and the pros. And we certainly hope and invite you guys to check out all the programming as well. But for this Wednesday, as we get out of here, you got the plays. I'll tweet them out. Angel, as always, Martinez behind the glass, keeping us on the air, producing today's show. You guys out there at 727 Good stuff with comments. I'll get to you guys on Facebook and X as well. Back in the saddle on a Friday. Everyone have a good sports Wednesday. Enjoy the rest of your baseball afternoon. Uh, the Olympics, break into electric boogaloo, whatever you guys have going on. I mean, if, if you can bet on it, who knows? Let me know if you guys are betting on, uh, you know, who's doing the a worm and who's doing the, um, you know, spinning on the head and what kind of value you can get on that. But, um, Appreciate you guys chiming in as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Buck Street South. And of course, Rich Q on Q. We'll be back in the saddle. Have a good sports Wednesday. As always, be safe. Be sound. I'm Rich Quinones. I'll see you